Hello, and welcome to Untangle 101 SD Round Router. I'm Sherilyn Hill, and I'm part of the marketing team here at Untangle. Presenting today is our technical marketing engineer, Chad McNaughton, and we'll get to Chad in just a moment. But first, a couple of the housekeeping items. Um, if you've joined us, I'm sure you're used to these. If you're new, um, just a few quick things. Um, first, to get the best view, choose the highest resolution via the gear icon. Uh, the slide shows where you can find that in the bottom right of the viewer. Um, I know some people don't have that option, but if you do, we suggest that. Second, if you have any questions, please include them in the chat box. We always try to answer them during the webinar, but if for some reason we don't answer your question, a member of our team will follow up with you directly. And lastly, if you do need to leave the webinar and want to check out the rest of it later or review something later, um, all the webinars are available on demand. Um, so you can just watch that at your convenience. And now uh, take it away, Chad. Yeah, thanks, Sherilyn. Um, welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, as she said, this is being recorded. Obviously, we'll have it on the Bright Talk channel. Um, we have had people experience some low res viewing, that kind of stuff. Everything is absolutely perfect on my screen. It's wonderful. I'm pushing 300 megs per second. Uh, if it doesn't look good, if it's not buffering, it might be your internet, but the recording should look OK. Um, as we go through the demo, I'll try to zoom in and all that stuff. Um, when we get to uh, the demonstration, I'm going to jump into one of our E6WL devices that's actually running our new beta version 3.1. Um, so um, technical question, two seconds in. We'll get back to that. So the agenda here, we're just going to do a quick overview of SD-WAN, kind of explain it in our terms, how we utilize it, how we build the infrastructure, some use cases for SMBs, as well as some larger organizations. Um, obviously, we'll go through some basic SD-WAN routing versus WAN optimization. Those can be two different things. We'll talk about policy-based routing, some optimal path selection, the newest features. And then, like I said, the live demo of that E6WL. And at some point, we'll get a picture that's not five years old of me, but next week. So obviously, modern businesses are pretty dispersed these days. Untangle's a really good example of that. We have about 60 employees worldwide. We have three offices in two states, but we have employees all over the world. Uh, most of us are still working remotely here in the States, obviously, with COVID restrictions. Um, some folks are starting to go back to the offices. I work at home permanently, so I could throw an SD-WAN router at my house, which would be a really cool thing, but I just have a VPN client. So SMBs have lots of locations nowadays, just like I mentioned us. Um, so teams like ours that are dispersed globally, even you know nationally, need to stay connected, protected, and then just aligned as a team. So some of the challenges for small businesses, especially on their networks, are you know remote locations where branch offices have really terrible bandwidth or maybe no internet provider available. Um, certain types of traffic, especially media, can have really lousy quality and real-time communications. Um, as we all know, you know, we use Zoom and Meet and and Go to Meeting and Bright Talk for all these things. Some are better than others. Some are more intense than others on your network. Networks can consist of really, really different types of devices nowadays without any control over those endpoints. Um, we call that BYOD in general when people bring your own device onto the network, but it could it could be even something as simple as a, a, a large organization where you're not sure what all is connecting. We can give you visibility into that. And then obviously some internal systems need to be secured while being accessible from basically anywhere. So whether we're doing site-to-site -site VPN, or a VPN client, we would talk about different types of products on the SD-WAN router. We're going to talk about site to site. So obviously a lot of IT departments are turning to software defined wide area networking. Uh, this is a way to simplify network management just by creating a virtual network overlay on top of physical infrastructure. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's, it's someone defining your WAN via their software in the cloud, right? So that's not exactly what we do yet. We route traffic to your SD-WAN, but some of the benefits of having your WAN defined by software are being able to aggregate links, um, identify optimal path, you know, with latency or bandwidth, things like that. First packet identification lets us do what we call predictive routing on the SD-WAN router, which is the thing that's proprietary to untangle. Um, and then assigning configurations through a central management 
plane, uh, which we call command center, is crucial. These are really what create an SD-WAN, right? You're not creating your network on the ground with a router physically on, on the network or on premises, I guess, on the network. You're doing this from the cloud. So our command center can help you with some of this stuff already, create WAN rules on the SD-WAN router. But the way our command center is moving is into network orchestration to fully orchestrate an SD-WAN from our cloud. So the Untangle SD-WAN router specifically is a VPN router that gives you connectivity and continuity. So we're connecting branch offices, connecting them back to headquarters for filtering, um, trying to optimize their application performance. If you're using Zoom, we'll create a rule that says send all Zoom traffic out of the, the best WAN, the lowest latency WAN, the highest bandwidth WAN, whatever you think. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we're also gonna try to maximize your uptime, obviously, with uh, multiple WANs, failovers. And then there is cloud-based remote management for this. So I will jump into my command center here when I remote into the E6WL, but just keep in mind, this is, this is an Untangle device managed through Command Center, just like any NGFW. Um, if you're new to Untangle, uh, our two products are very different. However, they do share some common ground. The SD-WAN router is obviously a complement to the NG firewall, which can run at a hub in a hub and spoke scenario. And we'll talk about the architecture here in just a bit. So the Untangle network security framework is the basic architecture that I just described. So here's our little use case, uh, this retailer has multiple locations that they need to connect. So they need good internet that's reliable, obviously, uh, high quality applications and voice for business communications, and they need their connections to be secure for content filtering, uh, they want secure remote access, right? Isolated networks for guests, point of sale stuff. So you see they have three retail sites, a home office, a warehouse, and a main office. So at one of those places, we'll want an NG firewall in the middle, to do most of the filtering for this traffic. If you don't wanna filter everything on site, we just tunnel it to the NG firewall. And that's the basic idea behind this network security framework. Um, that's about as basic as I can put it. Hub and spoke VPN, NG firewall in the middle, SD-WAN router at the branch offices, creating the spokes. So the actual overview here, as you can see, I don't know where that NG firewall is hosted, uh, installed. In an SD-WAN infrastructure, it's probably running in AWS or Azure in the cloud. We could have that at a data center in a physical device. We could have it in VMware at a colo. It really doesn't matter. Um, what we're doing is routing traffic to the NG firewall from the SD-WAN routers. So you can see each, the, each uh, branch location, I guess, call them, uh, has the SD-WAN router going to the cloud. So the NG firewall is hosted in, in let's say Amazon, AWS. CEO who works at home also needs VPN. So instead of SD-WAN router, they just have a client on their computer hitting the NG firewall because a big distinction to make is that the SD-WAN router is not a VPN server, right? It's a VPN router. So we don't do client-based VPN on the SD-WAN router. So the NG firewall is the secure gateway and the VPN server. So the VPN access from the home office, they hit the NG firewall, they get filtered like a local user, however you want to do it. And then similarly with the, the remote locations, we have these you know uh, inexpensive internet links that we can optimize. Maybe they're using LTE as well. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. I'll kind of, it's kind of a tease for some of our international customers. Unfortunately, it's only available in the US right now, but we'll talk about it. And then prioritizing traffic is, is obviously a really, really, uh, important aspect of the SD-WAN router and creating a fast and secure, secure tunnel. So those lines are basically tunnels. Uh, I would recommend using WireGuard unless you need to use OpenVPN. Those are the two tunnel options on SD-WAN router right now. Um, WireGuard is our new favorite. We'll talk about it here as we go through the slides, but it's, in, in my experience, WireGuard is, is the fastest VPN tunnel I've ever used. Uh, I'm gonna mute myself, guys, while I sneeze. Give me one second. I think I caught it, apologies. Um, Insight. Yeah, thanks. Um, so this slide here is basically showing how everything's organized through Command Center. Every device you're seeing here, all these Untangled deployments are managed via our cloud console called Command Center. Um, if you're new to Untangled, Command Center is centralized management. It's also account management. Um, it's hosted privately in our cloud. We do offer some APIs for folks that need to host things externally sometimes, but we don't charge anyone for this. This is centralized management account management. And as I mentioned, 
it's getting more and more into what we're calling network orchestration. Um, as an SD WAN, we need to do orchestration from the cloud, like I said. So WAN rules, you know, VLANs, all that stuff's going to be coming to command center. So we can basically define your entire network from command center. So just to simplify SD WAN a little bit, right? We're trying to simplify remote access for devices and networks. Not everyone who works remotely is um, is is technically savvy enough to use things like VPN clients and some of you may think that's that's funny that I'm being hyperbolic, but there are lots of folks who just don't know how to use a VPN client and have no interest in learning. Um, <laughs> I would rather just put a little site to site box like this at their office and just tunnel their traffic that needs to be filtered over. We can split tunnel if we want to. So rather than having, you know, uh, Joe from accounting trying to figure out a WireGuard client, we could just put an SD-WAN router box out at that little remote site for those three people, tunnel them back to the NG firewall. Um, WireGuard, as I said, is probably the highest performing VPN tunnel I've experienced. We've tested it between 70 and 80% line speed. Um, I'm actually on it right now. It's not impacting my speeds because it's a split tunnel. So the site to site is a really simple thing. We set these things up uh, on the ND, on the NG firewall WAN rules, which I'll walk through here. But then we can say, you know, um, hosts, networks, applications, whatever we want to do, we use those route rules to send that traffic to the NG firewall for filtering. I did mention some of the LTE options. Uh, apologies in advance to our international folks in the US. You can use T-Mobile, Verizon, or AT&T SIM cards on that uh, E6WL. So that's the box I'm going to remote into. Um, we have a, uh, I believe, uh, AT&T SIM card in there. I'll have to look again. But I'll show you kind of how it looks with you know six interfaces, including a WireGuard tunnel and LTE. Um, keep in mind, here in the US, if you're at a remote site that can't even get internet, you could, if you had to, use LTE as your only WAN and get online. So it's, <clears throat> excuse me, ideally it's designed to be a failover, right? But it's for connectivity. So one way or another, if you need it, AT&T, T-Mobile and Verizon, um, you just, you know, get kind of an unlimited SIM card from the store and you put it in the little slot there in the front. And now you've got an LTE interface for failover and routing. So I'm going to jump over to my E6WL here. Um, I'm already remoted into a device. Um, let me get my screen shared. It'll take me just a second here, folks. Okay. Sherilyn, you should be seeing my E6WL, right? I do see it. Awesome. Um, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here too because I know that text is tiny. Um, we do have an SD-WAN router demo online. If you wanna go to SD-WAN router-demo.untangle.com, I think. Um, however, it's a virtual machine with two interfaces. So I like to show this one a little bit more. And we actually just updated this to the beta yesterday. So I'll be able to walk you guys through a couple of new features here on 3.1. So that's where I wanted to start. This is a real new product still, right? It's only about a year and a half old. We are only on version 3.0 currently. 3.1 is in beta. Um, if you go to forums.untangle.com and the SD-WAN router thread, you can find the beta there if you want to you know, throw it on your Linksys router or play around with it on your E3 or something. Um, the main difference is threat prevention. So I'm going to get to that, but we're going to go kind of in order across the tabs here. Um, as Sherilyn mentioned, we do have uh, folks answering chat questions. If you guys have any questions, please don't be shy about punching them into the chat box there, the questions panel. Um, I'm, I'm not currently looking at that screen, but uh, Sharon, if we get any big major questions, just, just ping me in Slack or interrupt me, feel free. Um, Thank you. Thanks. So obviously we have a little dashboard here, a widget based system. Um, anyone familiar with the NGFW? This looks vaguely familiar, but a little bit nicer, I think. Um, I, I spent a decade or so, you know, a lifetime ago as a design teacher. I taught uh, web and graphic design back when they were separate. And that part of my brain is much more pleased with this interface than the NGFW because I like this color palette. It's very muted. It's not quite as in your face. <clears throat> and the main reason it's not as in your face is because it's not doing all the filtering. So this doesn't do layer seven content filtering. We're starting to do threat prevention. Like I mentioned, there will be some mild content filtering, I think coming in another revision this year. But as it stands now, 
I see lots of YouTube traffic, right? I see Yahoo, I see CNN. So if I want to take a little deeper dive into these, I would go in and set up some rules. I could look at my reports, see who's using what, because this is a full blown router. This is your gateway device. The reporting that we love though is on the NGFW. So this thing is going to go either full tunnel or split tunnel to the NGFW, and then we'll be able to see better information right there on the firewall itself. Um, you notice I do have lots of uh, uh, interfaces here. We've got a, a phones VLAN, we've got our WireGuard interface, and we've got our LTE. You see it's not being utilized yet, but we will get over to those here in a second. This is the widget system. You can customize these, turn these off and on. If you want to add different widgets, you can do that. I can add a blocked session widget here for threat prevention. So that basically uh, appends to the bottom. Threat prevention is very new here. Um, it's also using the, the same engine we use on our NG firewall. It's coming from WebRoot. So it's basically a sliding scale based on IP reputations. We'll, we'll show you what it looks like here when I get over to the settings tab. Um, you can also go back here up to 24 hours on the dashboard. You can add conditions as well if you want to, to narrow the dashboard down, but you can always come over here and just kind of click on a report. There's not a lot of actionable information on the reports. You don't click to block something, right? It's like the NG firewall, you remote into the device to make any changes. But this dashboard is pretty, pretty simple. I like the way it looks. Uh, all of our interfaces are getting revisions this year too, so this will get even cleaner here as the year goes. I wanted to also point out, <clears throat> excuse me, this is the biggest SD-WAN router device we make. And you notice it's it's an Intel Atom two gigahertz processor with you know two gigabytes of memory. So this is a really, really, really lightweight device for a smaller branch location, right? I would never tell you to try to route 500, 600, 1,000 devices through this thing, but it's a pretty powerful little box. So um, the more WANs, the better. That's where our optimization comes in. But even with just one primary WAN, we'll still be able to do things like predictive routing, uh, but we won't do as much, um, you know, best WAN action because you'll only have one. So on the report side here, it's pretty minimized. We come through uh, basically things like applications by time. We like seeing uh, applications by bandwidth. That's one of my favorite reports um, on all of our devices. And similar to the NG firewall, if you've ever used it, you can come over here and turn things off that are somewhat less relevant. So now I can see what's really happening on this network is... Twitter <laughs> and some YouTube and some Yahoo. And so I could go in and create a firewall rule to drop those packets if I wanted to. I could uh, throttle them down a little bit, shape their traffic. What we're doing here is firewalling and traffic shaping. We're not doing the content filtering. So I can't say, you know, tar pit this application, block this URL. We do that on the NG firewall. So also on the reports, we can jump into interfaces and see things like latency and jitter. These are really important on the SD-WAN router because this is what helps us do our optimization, choosing a, a shortest path WAN, best optimal. So some of this is um, <laughs> some of this is interesting to look at. Some of it kind of isn't, right? But on the back end, the, the SD-WAN router is doing some really cool things to just help with optimization based on jitter, packet loss, whatever. But predictive routing is a huge part of that. And we'll talk about that here in just a second. So the threat prevention reports here also, we mentioned kind of top addresses by block count. So if you hover, you'll see how many blocks, et cetera, only four packets, nine packets, that's okay. Blocked sessions, not all that many, just a few yesterday. And then this is just a full session viewer here, if you wanna see. So once again, we can change this to, to up to 10,000. If we wanna go in and add conditions, we can narrow these down as well. Um, it's it's got some very interesting reports. It can show you some cool stuff pretty immediately. By by default, I would still tell you to to go by the NGFW reports. Um, this device here is part of a framework. We're not trying to have you put this at the edge device at your branch location by itself, right? I want it to route their traffic to an NG firewall so we can see what they're doing, report on it, take action, block past tar pit, prioritize whatever we need. So traffic shaping, firewalling happens here. Layer seven content filtering happens on the NG firewall. Um, 
And and as I, Sherilyn said, this is being recorded, right? If anyone has any questions we don't get to, we'll follow up later. You can always contact us. We'll show you some contact information here at the end. Um, if anyone wants to schedule a demo with me, we'll let you know how. So if I click on sessions here, it's obviously a session viewer. I can add columns, I can remove columns, rearrange things. I don't have a ton of stuff presented in here. You can see how much we can show you. Um, I'm gonna take a screenshot because you guys aren't crazy. That little pop-up box is kind of low res. Keep in mind, we're looking at a beta version. So that'll get fixed. Um, and then we can also group in here. So that's not something we do on our other product. We also have a filter box if you want to. Um, so the session viewer is really handy. You can put a lot of session viewers on your dashboard on this thing as well too. I keep a few of them on there. So I'm gonna touch on settings here for a bit. Um, as you can see, this is where we do all the fun stuff. Um, drop downs are the same as the little basic menu there. So if you just want a quick, uh, quick link, that's kind of what these are. So if we just go look at my interfaces, this is where we were seeing my WireGuard, LTE, all that stuff. Um, so I'm out of interfaces. If I need to make a new one, I'm gonna come up here to add interface. So I've got OpenVPN, WireGuard, or VLAN available. So I can create tunnels with either VPN app or I can just create a VLAN. And we do have access rules here. VLANs need to talk to each other, things like that. We have filter rules built in as well. So any of these WANs here can be used in a route rule. I can just say all Zoom traffic goes over WireGuard. I could say all YouTube traffic goes over LTE because who cares? It just depends on how you need to do things at the branch location, what really needs to be split off to be filtered. We do have some new DHCP options here as well in the in the new version, uh, basically 3.0 version. Um, we're able to do some, some quicker lease, leases and reservations, building reservations off of extent, existing leases. I'm sorry. Um, I actually did a webinar a few weeks ago just over version 3.0, the current version of SD-WAN router and all the new features in it. That's online if you guys wanna check it out. And this is also where we do static entries for DNS, local servers, that kind of stuff. This is a router. We don't install this thing in bridge mode behind another router at that site. So if we need static entries, we just have a little add button here. Pretty simple. In the routing, we start doing cool stuff. So this is where you set up what we call a policy. Um, for any resellers on the, on the webinar, you're very used to us using the word policy. This is, this is the third or fourth way we use it. Um, a WAN policy is a is basically a, a setting that you tell us. So you see my very top one there. This is a top-down order. Best WAN with lowest latency is WAN 0 and WAN 1. Best WAN with highest bandwidth is evenly weighted between all the WANs. So if we want to create a specific rule, we have to or policy, we have to say specific WAN, and I want it to be WireGuard. So if I create a new policy here, you can see it's best WAN, balancing, or specific. When I say best WAN, what do I mean? Does that mean to me lowest latency, bandwidth, et cetera, et cetera? So you can have a couple of these different policies and route different kinds of traffic to them. And then I wanna pick specific WANs to be part of this policy. I know that WireGuard and WAN1 have the lowest latency. So to me, that's the best WAN. So I can create conditions like that, basically tell the SD-WAN router what I think is the best WAN or I can let it kind of do, its own, do it on its own by waiting it. So the rules are where you actually start routing traffic. Um, when we get into a rule here, let me pull one up. The Salesforce one will work. So when we get into a rule, I want you to kind of pay attention here where I'm highlighting. You see application name inferred. <clears throat> Excuse me. Inferred is what's going to give you predictive routing. Um, as I said, this is a proprietary thing at Untangle. Um, I think the full name is Untangle Proprietary Predictive Routing, which uh, I should get a raise for saying in one breath. But <laughs> what we're doing, you can see inferred. Don't overthink it. That really means what it says. We're guessing about what that packet is. If we think it's Salesforce, then we just send it over the highest of bandwidth WAN. The interesting thing about predictive routing is that I have personally never see it be incorrect. So we we were we were pursuing a, a patent on this, and and we may still. But this is what sets the uh, I'm sorry the SD WAN router 
really apart from the NG firewall is the way it routes traffic. We want this thing to be at a branch location where there isn't wonderful internet. So by inferring what a packet is, rather than waiting on layer seven identification of that packet, we can just route it faster. Um, the really simple analogy I use is a packet comes in, it looks like it says Facebook on it, and we just send it to Facebook, you know, and it's just kind of never wrong. So predictive routing can speed things up. It can make a really lousy connection feel a bit faster. But if you have multiple WANs, obviously we can do a lot more with optimization, bouncing between different WANs, et cetera. Um, I wanted to kind of scroll through a couple of conditions here. So over on the right, you can see most of these are doing inferred on the application. But if I wanted to be a little more uh, strict, I guess, I could put source address, you know, interface. Um, if I want to do local host, remote host, oop, I just hit my microphone. Sorry, everybody. Um, and then there's some certificate subject conditions, which is actually pretty interesting to me. Um, the postal code is one in here. So there's some pretty crazy stuff you can you can tell us to balance with um, connection state, even protocols. But then basically you say create rule. This is update rule because I'm in an existing one. But all this is saying is when someone uses a Salesforce app, we see a packet that looks like Salesforce. It's going to go out the best WAN with the best bandwidth. So it's a simple thing to, uh, to me, it's a simple thing to wrap your head around once you understand that we're basically just doing VPN routing here, right? S split tunnel routing, whatever you want to do. You see, we can do full tunnel too. send all traffic from LAN one to WireGuard. That's going to send all their traffic to an NG firewall for filtering. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the tunnel, the NG firewalls, the, the server, right? So I, I try to clarify this as much as I can with folks, right? What we're doing here is, is VPN routing. We're not creating, defining your WAN. We're routing to it. So depending on where the NG firewall is installed, this is a really cool solution because you could send traffic to anywhere. If you felt like it, and if you had my gateway address, you could send your SD-WAN router traffic to the Z6 in my bedroom closet here in Denver. Um, let's not test that, but you could. <laughs> it's just, just keep that in mind. It's just a security gateway that you direct traffic to in a route rule. Um, let me go peek real quick over at questions. Uh, anything big and crazy? Okay, we got some good questions. We'll come back to it here in a second. Um, the reason I wanted to look at questions is because the we gave a we have an hour for our webinar here, but I wanted to get into some questions because the SD-WAN router is not nearly as complicated to demonstrate as our NG firewall. So this really these 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 webinars these demos are not as long. So we'll have more time for questions and answers. I think at the end. Um, I mentioned we can do filter rules, access rules. This is a layer three firewall, right? We're an edge device. We have to be able to to drop in valid sessions, you know, packets that are that are dead. We want to kill those sessions and drop the packets. If we want to block high risk apps, we can do that too. As I said, this isn't a layer seven content filter, but because of the predictive routing, we have a big local application signature database. So if we do have something like that that matches, you can go ahead and create firewall rules to block or pass things basically dropping packets. Um, I'm going to edit that rule real quick so you can see some of the conditions. You notice that one is not inferred, it's matched, right? So you can here see inferred or matched. Maybe I don't want to guess. Maybe I, I need really specifically uh, Office 365 traffic filtered, et cetera. I likely wouldn't want to drop that, right? I would probably accept that or send it to a better WAN, et cetera. I just wanted to show you some conditions. So when you get into the firewall with filter rules, we do have some more conditions available here because it is um, it is a pretty standard uh, micro firewall, right? This is a really, really interesting modern firewall architecture. Um, obviously a lot more modern than our NG firewall because it's, a, it's our original product. The SD-WAN router is, like I said, the edge device for your, your remote site. So we have to do things like this as a micro firewall. We have to offer things like traffic shaping and natting. Um, so if we need to go in and do any shaping, we do that here. Natting is done here. And then any port forwarding that needs to be done, we can do here. Um, I wanted to touch on the services here because this is where we've uh, included threat prevention now. <clears throat> so if you, if you do have an SD-WAN router running uh, and you don't have the beta version, you won't have this services tab that I'm on right now. I currently have this thing set to be kind of 
relaxed. Um, if we wanted to be a little more paranoid, we can always increase it up to moderate. Um, I also like to enable the redirect for any block pages. So they'll go to HTTPS. And then if we need to pass anything, we can do that with CIDR notation here. So it's, uh, it's a really easy thing to set up, right? You turn it on, you do the redirect. My pro tip is to kind of, you know, watch your reports. Um, I don't love going super paranoid because sometimes I don't think something's as risky as our provider thinks, but that's up to you. You know, you can always pass them. You can always change the, uh, the threat monitor here. I think that's what I call it. I don't know. Um, so keep that in mind. This is coming in the new version, threat prevention. As you can see, it's going to try to block a lot of stuff here. We don't do much filtering, right? We're not a layer seven content filter on the SD-WAN router, but between threat prevention and a couple of just pro tips that I can give you, we can do some, some interesting content filtering here. Um, last month, I actually sent out a pro tip talking about DNS filtering on your SD-WAN router. If you wanted to, you could change your DNS entries here, maybe your secondary DNS to be something like 1.1.1.3. Um, this is strictly a pro tip, but this is DNS filtering for malware and pornography provided by Cloudflare. So because we're not filtering content right here, we wanna send that to the NG firewall. You could have your traffic that's going out the WAN still getting filtered a bit with uh, Cloudflare. So you could do 1.1.1.1, 2, or 3. Those are each increased levels of malware protection with DNS filtering from Cloudflare. So that's a pro tip. Um, that, that was my pro tip email that went out last month to our users. Um, if you're not an Untangled user yet, there's your pro tip. So there is some DNS filtering available from Cloudflare, um, and they do a pretty great job for a lot of that stuff. Yes, discard that, please. Um, we went through routing policies, all that stuff. So the really the only things left are just you know basic settings. This is where we do uh, the admin accounts. If you need to actually shut down the device, you do that from here. Um, I don't. It's our E three is such a small device. It's an atom processor. It makes no noise. There's no moving parts. It feels like you can just yank the power cord out and plug it back in. And I wish you wouldn't do that. <laughs> There's no telling what that could cause. So uh, please do a soft shutdown here if you need to take the device offline, move it to a different building, that kind of stuff. We also have the upgrade here. Uh, if you want to upgrade, just click right here. I have this one set to automatically update on mid, uh, on Saturdays at midnight. If you want the beta version, however, go to our, our user forums, forums.untangle.com. There's an SD-WAN router thread. We do have lots of logging in here. Uh, we actually have uh, dmessage as well. Um, there are, I think there are some better parsers maybe for dmessage and there are log read here in, at times. Um, so we've updated that a little bit. I mentioned we are doing li uh, license. I said the I said the word I was looking at. I mentioned we're doing UI refreshes. I saw I saw a question someone asking if we have dark mode for this UI yet, and we do not. But that's something that's probably coming to all of our interfaces here later this year as we revise all the UIs. You can see this here. My subscription is unlimited throughput. Um, that was something I was going to mention. Uh, this this device is licensed by throughput. So if you're looking for this at your remote site, we need to know the ISP speeds for every WAN you have out there. We want to we want to license you for the maximum throughput you have. So if it's over, uh, I think 500 megabits per second, we go unlimited. Um, but that's how it looks on the on the device itself. If you don't license it for the appropriate throughput, you'll get capped to what you license it to. Um, that's more or less my SD-WAN router demo. Like I said, it's a pretty simple little device. Going through the interface usually only takes about 15, 20 minutes. If you guys do wanna do a, a kind of a one-on-one -on -one demo with me, ask more questions, anything like that, feel free to, uh, to contact us at uh, sales at untangle.com or pre-sales at untangle.com. Um, I'm going to jump back over to my slides here real quick. Let me see if we've got any questions. Lots of good questions. Okay, I'm gonna leave my server up then. I won't go back to the slides yet. Let's see. Is the interface you're showing a cloud tool or is this running from the device? This is this is a piece of hardware that I'm showing. So um, the E6WL is our big, awesome piece of hardware for SD-WAN router. SD-WAN router can currently only be deployed on our E-series or in VMware. 
So when we're uh, testing this stuff, I mentioned earlier, you could put it on something like a Linksys WRT1900. Um, it would be a beta version forever. It's not a supported deployment, but it's an easy way to, to kind of kick the tires and test a little bit. Let's see here. Is the DNS DHCP function still running off MDNS at the back end? Are there any plans to update something? Uh, we don't run anything off multicast actually. Um, so no, it's all still, uh, we're running DNS mask on pretty much everything still, but this is not, uh, this is not the same OS as the NGFW either. So we're doing some pretty different stuff here. Uh, how many apps are recognized and are there, um, there are no, okay. How many apps are recognized and are there any default or built in app policies or do they all have to be explicitly defined? Other than just a best WAN policy, you'll have to define st stuff. Um, I don't know the specific number of how many apps are available, but if we go look at a rule real quick, um, let's edit this Salesforce rule again here. Application name inferred is, there's a lot of them, you know, there's thousands and thousands of these apps. So. If you just punch in a value, it'll start showing you things. Um, this is everything that has like an A in it. Um, there's a ton of apps in here. So a couple of thousand probably. So I say uh, the application signature database is is pretty big. It's pretty, pretty robust right now. It will keep getting bigger. But if there's, if there's not a name in there that you're looking for, we would just create a different kind of condition for, you know, port or interface or whatever you guys are getting. Um, we could even go down to like the cert level, like I said earlier, <clears throat> excuse me. But yeah, basically that's what we would, that's what we would go off of that category database or that database, sorry, is provided by a third party, right? We do that on the NGFW as well. Um, so it updates every time we update the software here. If you don't see an app that you need, like I said, we'll probably just use different protocols to do that rule. Oh, let's see what else we've got here. Is there a dark mode? Oh, I answered that. There is not yet. I think there probably will be before too long, though. Um, so if I have a work from home setup with SD WAN router, can I split traffic between office with all the bells and whistles and the household with memory protection NAT? Split. Yeah, basically, that's what we're talking about, split tunneling. So you see um, on that rule there, number three on the screen, that's a full tunnel rule. We're saying everything from this LAN goes over WireGuard. But above that, we're doing you know, some split tunnel rules. So it's up to you, but yes, to answer your question, you can do either one. You can say, I only need my Zoom traffic and my Office 365 traffic to go over WireGuard. Um, and then everything else just goes out your WAN. Uh, let's see, is there a way to assign open VPN clients static IP addresses? Um, yeah, that'll pretty much happen here if you need to. This will be site to site, ideally. Uh, let's see here. I think that's all the questions we've got for right now. Let me jump back over to my slides here, folks, and we'll get a quick peek here. Let's bring up those slides. Sherilyn, do you see my slides? Oh, geez. They're trying. Oh, there they are. There it, <laughs> it took it a second. Yeah. Um, it bugged out on me. Got a um, little crazy there. Yeah. Um, if anyone else has any questions, like I said, please don't be shy. Let us know. Um, sales at untangle.com. If you're not a customer yet, pre sales at untangle.com. Um, we also have uh, support at untangle.com. If you're an existing customer with an SD WAN router, have any having an issue or something like that. Um, we do have some links here in the slides. Um, obviously, this is a resource you can download. You, you're not going to click on this in the video. Um, but under the resources, yeah. All those have... re oh, sorry, Chad. All those resources are in Bright Talk for you to download or mm -hmm. links to click. Excellent. Um, the DHCP server management I touched on lightly. Uh, what I didn't touch on were the NIC media speed settings. Um, so that's kind of a new thing in version 3.0 that we released. You can go in and kind of manually adjust um, uh, duplex settings and things like that. The one that's really neat right there is that white paper exploring WAN optimization, because this is a, this is one of those areas that I think uh, blends together in a lot of people's brains, right? Whether we're talking about just optimizing connectivity or connecting to an SD WAN, they can be uh, mutually exclusive. They don't always act that way. So if I'm connecting you to a cloud-based NG firewall that's part of an SD WAN, I'm still going to optimize your WANs, but we're part of an SD WAN technology there. We don't have to be, 
It's just a VPN router. Keep in mind, um, we want to be ready for the the way things are moving. Right, we're we're in a small business world. We're seeing things move to the cloud, off premise, trying to reduce hardware costs by running virtual machines, cloud instances. So that's that's what we're enabling you to do as a small business with this thing. Keep in mind, it's a VPN router, though. You could route traffic to whatever, wherever, as long as it's an NGFW secure gateway. Um, one of the things that I didn't mention, SD-WAN router uh, doesn't do is IPsec VPN. So keep that in mind. If you're looking for site to site and you require IPsec VPN, we will we will still talk about our NG firewall product with you because that can do it. Um, so one way or another, to getting your hub and spoke put together, NG firewall in the middle, SD-WAN routers out at the branches. It's a it's a fairly simple architecture. The routing is fairly simple. And as I said, it's gonna get easier and easier as we go because we're gonna start doing all of this network orchestration from the actual uh, cloud in infrastructure in command center. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go, I'll see if we have any other questions here. Are there charity yeah. licenses? Is there licensing for nonprofits? Um, yes. So we do nonprofit and public sector licensing. Um, you can see some of those at untangled.com if you go look at our, our purchase options. But if you have questions, I, I highly encourage you to email us at un, uh, sales at untangled.com. We're a small business. Um, not everything you see online is the bottom line, right? So let us know if you have questions though. But yeah, if you want to schedule a demo or something like that, there are links on our website to schedule demos as well. Uh, you'll most likely get a demo with me uh, I do most of our pre-sales here. I'm our, I'm our technical marketing engineer, as Sherilyn mentioned. Um, but I do a lot of our pre-sales demos and, and things like onboarding our partners and training and that kind of stuff. So if anyone has any questions, like I said, um, please don't be shy. I, I say this on lots of webinars and lots of demos. There are no dumb questions when you're getting into Untangle because we just have so much going on now. You know, we've got the, the NG firewall, the SD-WAN router and command center. They all work together, talk together. It's all part of this cool security framework we have. So like I said, um, hit us up with any questions. You can find out more on untangled.com, on Spiceworks, on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. We're all over the place. Um, let's see. What Last about? two questions. Yeah, let's see. How are link health KPIs like jitter, latency, loss measured over public WAN links? Uh, they're not measured any differently. We see all that stuff on the device itself. Um, we can actually see that in command center though, too. So the way they measure it is pretty static, right? Across any WAN, we don't really change that depending on the WAN. So as long as you're seeing the measurement, I would say it's pretty accurate. Um, German as well. Uh, I might need some clarification on that. That's <laughs> we so okay. So here's the last question: How are link uh, over public WAN links? And then we have one uh, German as well. So if someone's asking for like language packs or something like that, we can do lots of weird things with language packs on our servers. Um, our ng firewall has dozens of different language packs because it's been around for so long. This is a really new product. So if we have folks that are willing to help us translate different language packs for the interface. Let us know on our user forums. Um, there's a huge list of uh, for, uh, forum threads in different languages, and there's also a translation thread. Uh, we rely a lot on the community for that. If that's your question, I hope it is. I, I hope I didn't lose the question entirely in translation either. Um, so one way or another, we want to be able to help you in your own language, right? We offer English only support because we're US based. So for our uh, international customers, obviously we have distributors in a lot of different countries that can provide local uh, support or support just in your language. Um, but we depend on our community a lot for some of that translation. So if you have any questions about it or if you wanna uh, help us with it, let me know at presales at untangle.com. Um, I'm also one of our forums administrators, so if you post something on the forums, you can you can mention my name or Spiceworks, same thing. Um, I think the slide's probably been up here long enough. I think that's all the questions we got here. It looks like everything got answered. Um, I'm gonna pass it back over to Sherilyn to take us home. All right, hey, thanks, Chad. Um, thank you everyone for attending today. Uh, we really appreciate you being here and spending some time with us. And thanks, Chad, for presenting. Um, and we hope that you all enjoy the rest of your day. Take care, everybody. Thanks, everybody.